page 2. So 82 on 205. And the function is t of t. I don't like the notation, but anyway. Plus 78e to negative 0 0.04. 1t. What was the temperature? What was the original temperature of the boiling water? How do I determine that? Can anyone tell us, give us an idea? How do I determine the um, original temperature? Original. Also called initial. T equals zero. Maybe? Exactly. T of zero. Excellent. So zero times this number is 0, e to 0 is 1, 78 plus 22, 100 degrees Celsius. Excellent, thank you. Part B, uh, what is the water temperature after 15 minutes? So, um, I was just making sure the T was in minutes, yes. Perfect. So what was the water temperature after 15 minutes? I know what you're going to say is T of 15. And we can just plug it in in a moment. Then, when will the water temperature be 40 degrees? So in part C, this is now 40 degrees. Equals 22 plus 78 times E to negative 0.41 T. And if you remember, we have to re remove or subtract 22 from both sides. Uh, we do get 18. We have to divide by 78. And then we get e to negative 0.041t. So I remove this, I subtract it, and I divide it by 78. You don't have to divide this. How do we determine t? What procedure or operator we need to apply to both sides in order to finalize this and get the final answer? Natural log. Yes, awesome. We apply natural log to both sides. So then natural log of 18 over 78 equals negative 0.041t. And of course, to solve for t, we divide everything by this number. So then t equals, and natural log is at the top. Since this is just a, a quick number, I'm just going to use the local calculator here. So not zero, okay, so natural log. So it's 18 over 78, don't forget to close the parentheses. Don't forget to put parentheses around the denominator because there is a, it's a negative number in there. And I got 35.76, 35.8. And this is in minutes. So T is in minutes and this was the temperature. Now I want to add a question to this. And here's the question that I want to add here. Find the rate of change of temperature with respect to time. And then evaluate it. at 15 minutes. You can say you forgot to plug this in. I will plug it in right now. So it's 22 plus 78 and then E to this number. Don't forget parentheses, negative 0.041 multiplied by 15. I got 64.2. So this is very important. All this was algebra, but this is calculus. Find the rate of change of the temperature with respect to time in minutes, and then evaluate it at 15 minutes. The same thing here. We were asked to evaluate to find the temperature after 15 minutes. We did. It's 64.2. But now we're asked here to find the rate of change of temperature with respect to time and then evaluate that 
at 15 minutes. So how do I do this? What uh, am I asked to do? T prime of T. Thank you very much. That's exactly it. The rate of change is T prime of T. Great job. Thank you very much. Good. So that's fine. T prime of T. So when I differentiate 22, what do I get? Zero. Excellent. Plus 78 multiplied by. How do I differentiate e to a function prime? Because that's what I have. e to a function. e to a function prime is... Anyone remembers the formula? Is it e... Uh, the function times the function prime. Ex excellent. Exactly. Exactly. Good. So it is e to the function times the inner function prime. Awesome. So I have to copy as is times the inner function prime. When I differentiate this, what do I get? Negative. Yes, point zero four one. Brilliant. That's all I needed you to say. I'm going to multiply this by this to simplify it. 78 and then parentheses negative point zero four one. I didn't need to. I know it's going to be a negative number. Negative 3.198. So negative 3.198 e to negative point zero four one t. Great job. But now they say, now you have it evaluated at 15. What do I need to do? Plug in 15 for t. Exactly. So I have negative 3.198 and e and parentheses negative 0.041 and I multiply by 15. And I got negative 1.7. What does negative 1.7 represent? Degrees per minute. Yes. Negative, what was it? 1 point, yes, 7. 1, negative 1.73 degrees Celsius per minute. So this is T prime of 15. So what does this mean again? When 15 minutes after we start cooling this, the temperature, the temperature decreases at that instant by 1.73 degrees per minute. Awesome. So done. So um, the next uh, question is, how do we graph this? That's our next in line. So that's page one, that's page two. Good. So here's the function f of x equals 2 over x squared minus 1. Good. We're ready. How do we start? We're asked to graph. Graph this function. What is my starting point? What do I have to do first? Find the asymptotes. Uh, true, but you are really referring to the domain. Domain is always oh, yeah. yes. Domain is the key. I can't start. I can't buy a ticket unless I know where I'm going. Right? I know where I'm going, and then I buy the ticket. Good. So, can anyone tell us what is the domain of this function? Anyone, please, domain. Negative infinity to infinity. Except? Except? Anyone? 
is it zero, positive one, and negative one? So when x squared minus one is zero, which we cannot accept, it's true, x cannot be plus or minus one. Very good, awesome. Negative one, zero, one, infinity. Very good. So we know that since it's undefined at negative one and one, and I, I don't have a factor to simplify, this is it. What does x equals negative one and what does x equals one represent for this function? Critical points. Careful. So when you see them here like this, what does this remind you of? This is a rational function and it's undefined at negative one and one. So what could these be? Anyone give it a shot? Anyone? It's okay. We we did this in uh, college algebra as well. But now we are more sophisticated. We know more stuff. The asymptotes? Yes. The Vertical asymptotes. This is another VA. Vertical asymptote. Yes. Good. Now I plug in 0. 2 divided by negative 1 is negative 2. And I have to determine these limits. So limit of 2 over x squared minus 1 when x approaches infinity or negative infinity is not going to make any difference. Where is this going? The numerator is 2. Where is the denominator going when x approaches infinity or negative infinity? It doesn't matter. Where is it going? Just this piece. When x approaches infinity, where is x squared minus 1 going? Zero. So infinity squared minus 1. Infinity squared minus 1. Infinity. Excellent. And now, tiny bit divided by huge. I have two dollars and I want to share it with everyone on the planet. When I get to your door, how much is left? Zero. Yes. Which means y equals zero is a horizontal asymptote. Because these are vertical asymptotes, I have to determine the limits. I know the limits, but I know I don't know the sign. So in order to determine the sign, you have several options. You can put the function in the graphing calculator. And just plug in numbers left and right of negative 1. And left and right of 1. So let's do that. Careful how you enter it. So it's 2 divided by, you have to have parentheses, x squared minus 1. So, second and table. I want a number to the left of negative 1, like negative 1.1. Okay, I see positive. I'm going to copy positive. On the other side, negative 0.9. I'm going to copy negative on the left hand side of 1, 0.9. Negative. I'm going to copy negative. And on the other side at 1.1, I'm going to copy positive. So I know that once these become vertical or are vertical asymptotes, it's the other way around to be exact. They are vertical asymptotes because these are 
the limits left and right are positive or negative infinity. Okay. At this point, I cannot determine anything else about the function. I have x and y intercepts. The y intercept does not exist. The x intercept does not exist. This is never zero. I have the horizontal asymptote. I have the vertical asymptote, and I have uh, the y intercept. And now I continue with the first derivative. That I'm going to change it into f of x equals two times x squared minus one to negative one. Do you have to do this? I recommend it. Because you have to be very careful if you choose to use the, the, the quotient rule, it's okay. But when you differentiate two and you don't write zero, you are gonna get a wrong answer. So be very careful if you wanna use the quotient rule. Very acceptable, 100%, but you have to be careful. I, on the other hand, prefer this. So I changed two over x squared minus one into two times x squared minus one to negative one because it comes from the denominator. And this is, I think, easier to differentiate. So then I have f prime. I bring down the power and multiply by two. I subtract one from the power times the inner function prime. Can anyone give us the inner function prime? 2x. 2x. Yes, and now I will change it back into a fraction. Negative 2 times 2x is negative 4x. Everything divided by x squared minus 1 squared. Remember now, I cannot analyze the first derivative without critical numbers. And critical numbers come from two sources. Anyone remembers what are those two sources for the critical numbers? Critical numbers come from M f prime being Zero. Excellent. So if f, if this is zero, what should x be if this fraction equals zero? Zero? Yes, because the fraction is zero only when the top is zero. Awesome. I found one critical number. I put it in a table immediately. And the other situation is for undefined, but this is not possible because this function is undefined at 1 or negative 1, but so is the function. So it cannot be a critical number unless the function exists. But the function does not exist at this point, at these points. So that's it. Now I have to study the sign of the derivative here. So what is the sign? Forget about the top for a moment. What is the sign of x squared minus 1 squared always and forever? And why? Positive? Yes. Why is this always positive? Because it is? Because it is? It's squared. Exactly. So we don't study the sign of something that is always positive. So it will be a waste of time. But we have to study the sign of this. The sign of this will give us the sign of the entire function, f prime. So to the left of 0, negative 4x to the left of 0. What is the sign of negative 4x to the left of 0? Plug in any number you want to the left of 0 and tell me the sign of negative 4x. Positive. Yes, absolutely. Because when I plug in a negative number, this always becomes positive. Great job. And on the other side of 0, plug in any number you want to the right hand side of 0 and just tell me the sign. Negative. Excellent. 
perfect. Stay with me, please. Almost there. At this point, can anyone explain to us what type of point is 0, comma, negative 2? A max. Yes, because the function, the derivative of the function is positive and then negative. So it's a relative max. So remember, we have to see whether these two rows work well together. This is the moment I say, oops, I made an error. Let's go back. Or I'll say, it's OK. I can move on to the second derivative. So let's try. From 0 to positive infinity, yep, it's increasing. From negative infinity to negative 2, yes. From negative 2 to negative infinity, yes. And from positive infinity to 0, yes. So everything seems to be fine. Now, I have to work on this function and find the second derivative. So, let's do that. Um, I'm going to copy f prime of x. And remember how I like to copy it. Because it's a factor. If, if I had something like this, I could have not done that, but I don't. So let's find the second derivative and see what happens. So second derivative, negative 4. The numerator prime is 1 times the denominator minus. The numerator times the denominator prime. We have to be careful. Bring down 2, subtract 1 from the power, times the inner function prime over the denominator squared, squared, squared. Do not distribute. Do not distribute, please. Factor instead. So now let's see. x squared minus 1 and then x squared minus 1 are common. So I will pull out x squared minus 1. Because only this way I can simplify one of them. I still have one left in. This is gone, so I have 2x times 2x, which is 4x squared. This is the best way. So I pulled out an x squared minus 1, but I had 2 initially, so 1 is out, but 1 has to stay in. This is out, 2x times 2x is 4x squared with minus in front. So negative 4. And this is uh, negative 3x squared minus 1 over x squared minus 1 to the third. I hope you are also allergic to so many negatives, so pull out a negative. So this is 4, 3x squared plus 1 over x squared minus 1 to the third. Not a friendly function. Not a friendly function, but easy to handle because it's never 0. 3x squared plus 1 will never be 0. So the only thing we need to do is just study the sign. And I refuse to study the sign of this. It's always positive. 3x squared plus 1, always positive. And 4 is 4. Nobody cares about it. So I can I only need to study the sign of x squared minus 1. So with x squared minus 1, um, when I plug in 0, I get negative. And when I plug in 10, I get positive. And when I plug in negative 10, I still get positive. So the function holds water. 
does not, which makes sense, it has a maximum. Of course he cannot hold water if it has a maximum. And it does. It happens that this function is also symmetric. Okay. Now everything else is gibberish, as you as I like to say it, just to make a point. This is the only thing I need. I don't care for anything else, nothing else is important, just my table. When we graph functions with asymptotes, we must graph the asymptotes first. x equals negative 1 and x equals 1. There is no need to graph this one because it's, it's the x-axis, but I'm going to do it anyway. So now let's graph. 